Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part two of the Pillars of Power of Elden Ring. Before we get into this, this video is meant for my old self who knew nothing of these games, nor how to get power, was confused as hell, and definitely, definitely wanted uh, to enjoy it and get an edge and understand the game and its mechanics and stuff like that. So if you're like that, if you're a little bit lost, if you don't know uh, exactly what to invest in or why you're even investing in it, uh, then that video, uh, this video is for you. Uh, and if you have any information, by the way, please share the love. Uh, I am absolutely not a pro in this. If I, I'm only made by the people in my lovely community who've helped me in this game when we're streaming it. Um, but alas, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into Pillar 2 of Elden Ring's Pillars of Power, which is uh, absolutely, without a doubt, your weapon. Your weapon is your key to damage and amplifying its ability to take from your build. Okay? <laughs> A little bit complicated there, but anyways, uh, point being is uh, we're not going to go into all of the weapons that are viable for your for your playstyle. We'll probably do that in part three or four just because that's going to be a monster video to edit. But what I can do is explain to you everything that's going on with your weapons and everything that's going on with the weapon art system and the reason why you want certain things, things like that. Also, none of my gear is too spoilery. Um, this is one of the first weapons you can get uh, in the early area. Pretty easy. Again, I'll tell you guys how to get this awesome weapon also. It's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, by the way, after the explanation of why you're getting what you're getting and why you want what you want, um, uh, we are going to talk to talk about how do you basically get the unlimited shards to level up your weapon to all the way up to level 12 right at the cuff immediately. You can do it in the first probably hour and a half of just banging around certain places, running in straight lines to certain areas, uh, and getting what you need and giving them to that lady over there uh, and being good to go. But that will be the latter half of the video, which is a little more complex, and I'll probably do in voice over land. But anyways... Let's get into why your weapons matter and what they are scaling off of. So in the previous video, we talked about why you put points into what you put points into, given your desire for what you're wanting to build or do. Uh, but uh, heavily, 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 what uh, we're going to want to pay attention to is specifically in regards to our weapons are things that are the scaling attributes, strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith, and maybe a little bit of arc arcane, but that's usually in uh, casting things, incantations and sorceries. I'm not even sure if I've ever seen it in a... Uh uh, a weapon, frankly. <laughs> but, but more or less, strength and dexterity is usually found within base, brute, melee weapons. Uh, and intelligence, faith, is usually in the kind of uh, magic adjacent. Like, it's a melee weapon, but it was used by a wizard and is ethereal. <laughs> so, not really, but sure. <laughs> anyway, so the main thing that you need to know about your weapon is the where what it's scaling into. And the more you level it up, the greater the scaling can become. So you guys can see that it has its attribute requirements. You've got five strength, nine dexterity, super easy to use. Uh, but then we go ahead and look at our strength scaling. We have a D scaling in our strength and a C scaling in our um, dexterity. So what does that mean? Scaling is basically the amount that the weapon is able to pull from your skill tree, your stats, your, your, uh, yeah, your stats. So if you have a high strength, you're going to be able to pull a little bit of strength into this weapon. Um, and if you have a little bit of dexterity, you're going to be able to pull a little bit, a little bit more than normal of damage and scaling from dexterity. Uh, now, if you have a build that has, say, five strength and nine dexterity at the bare minimum, and you have, say, like 50 intelligence, this weapon is going to suck because it's not pulling from the attribute, from the, the skill that you have the highest level of investment in, right? Um, now you might be like, well, that sucks. What if I want to use this weapon grin? This is bullshit. There is a way to force forcibly take uh, from a certain skill. So there's a way. Uh, there's two ways. W one's the mid game way and one's the beginner game way. They have to do with the weapon arts. But yes, there is a way to essentially force any weapon in the game to pull from your most desired stats so you can use whatever weapon you want. Um, and you can do this relatively fast, at least for a magic and stuff like that. Faith, a little bit more pain in the ass. You got to get to the capital. Nuts. <laughs> Bullshit. Anyway, uh, that was me. <laughs> I had to do that. So now let's talk about something that is significantly simpler. These are your seals. I don't have any staffs on me, but they'd be the same same test case. This is the beginner staff. You guys can see that it's scaling off of a little bit of strength, uh, a lot of intelligence, and uh, and yeah, also the intelligence gain requires exponentially more, but also scales more into intelligence. But I digress. Ah, very good. You want this. But now, a lot of the weapons push you down a road, specifically um, the seals. Uh, I imagine some of the staffs, but you guys can see that the passive bonus to the seal is going to buff God Slayer incantations uh, and such like that, um, which is good. But also, you guys can see that its scaling bonus is scaling at an A rating into faith. So if you have a ton of faith, um, it's going to push that your spells really, really far because it's dipping it, it's pulling from that stat scale. 
month. Now, for instance, it's Claw Mark, which is pulling off of your beast incantations. Now, this is for a hybrid build with uh, with strength and faith, uh, because it's split between C and C. Uh, whereas this one's way, way more heavily into faith and less into strength. Whereas this one's more split across the board. Now, when you heavily invest in a thing, um, if these both are A and A, that's pretty good investment. Um, but I think I'm not sure if it can go past A uh, or like if it goes to S. I don't think it does. So theoretically uh something that is on the same playing field if you level up continually will keep getting exponentially better and keep feeding into both of those stats but if you don't have a lot of strength at all uh you have all dexterity then this is the best bet because it's not pulling from strength and you're not losing anything instead you're gaining a lot because it's pulling a lot more from faith but yes that is essentially the weapon scaling and all of those things there's stuff like holy damage magic damage fire damage bleed now uh, those kinds of things those things are a little more obvious uh, like they have an effect so bleed it's a stacking mechanic it's really powerful it'll take a percentage of the health after it detonates a bleed very very good um but yes that is essentially why you level up your gears because it exponentially increases increases the amount your weapon can uh your, the scaling can pull from your abilities so if you have like 50 strength uh like crazy amounts of strength but your weapon isn't pulling uh it's pull, it has like a d rating for strength it's it's not worth using that weapon what you could do is um force it to pull more from strength which what we'll talk about right now is the first level of forcing a weapon to work for you uh okay and that is through the ash of war system uh, the surface level version of Ash of War system. Uh, so if we got, if we go into this, uh, you guys can see. Uh, so let's just go with dagger, just because it's not too much, too spoilery. <laughs> Sorry for some of the other gear on on screen. But anyways, the dagger. So uh, you guys can see that I have not that many <laughs> Ashes of War, but still. Uh, but you guys can see that I have a lot of Ashes of War that have this glowing like light. And what this is, and you guys can see that little square. Like you guys see the square, and there's a tiny little like golden knife there what that says is that that's going to make your weapon scale off of faith uh and this is going to make your weapon uh have a passive blood bleed up or build up uh, and you guys can see yeah it dips into arcane uh so this will force my weapon to now pull from arcane uh and the reason why is because we have a special thing here so you guys can see that we have sacred on this so the standard one keeps it everything above board it scales off dexterity and strength doesn't change anything uh yeah but if we go down to sacred uh sacred is going to because this special ash of war is technically considered like a holy or a faith scale or a faith ash of war you are passively synthetically uh, going to be getting this sacred buff or an option you probably won't have lightning which you'll have a standard or sacred um, and again, sacred uh, takes what was what is standard and makes it so that you can now dip into faith. Um, and there are many there are many blood uh, scaling things that will make you scale off of arcane if you have a lot of arcane. There's a lot of uh, of uh, faith based ones. Uh, so if you want to scale off faith, this one I believe scales up your strength, um, so it makes your your strength stat even more valuable because it was at a D and now it's a C. And I think if you just were to take it away, it would stay at, at, a, at an E rate, etc. Uh, but yeah, so so these are ways that you can quickly get access to things. The unfortunate thing about it is you're going to have to use the Ash of War that it gives you. Uh, so you can be kind of shit out of a really, really good Ash of War if you didn't want that scaling. So the scaling is directly attached to the Ash of War's effect, which in this case, Sacred Blade, that's what it's called. Uh, Sacred Blade is awesome. It's just like a huge thread of like AoE range damage uh, and also gives your blade the ability to like hit with holy light so it, it does a little bit more damage anyways it's very good that one's not a bad gain but then there's things like this uh yeah things like this which have 40 ap or magic cost and if this is your only gateway to make this scale off of the one valuable stat you have it's a shit it's a shit burger <laughs> it's, it's gonna be not good um now you might be saying, well, that sucks. What if I wanted to use like one, another ability that I thought looked cool, uh, but doesn't scale off of my thing. Am I just boned? No, no, you are not. So, uh, as you guys can see, there are things like this magic, lightning, sacred, and cold. Uh, so these are all blade types that you eventually attain as you just traverse the world. And as you go around, you can specifically snipe these if if not just the sacred one. The sacred one is a bitch because <laughs> you have to you have to actually go into the sacred city which doesn't get unlocked until you can kill a boss. But most everything, uh, specifically magic and such, uh, you can just run to get the magic scaling sword and then use what you'd like. 
Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, there are, yeah, there is a cap to this. I believe it's only for the, the base ash, ashes of war. So you can't do that with everything. Although some things, weirdly, you can, like lightning. You'll have to pick and choose. Yeah, so anything that scales off of physical, now you can add an elemental thing to it. But I guess the sp specific ashes of war that are sacred or blood or magic, I believe there's a couple ones like that. Those ones scale in a different way. So, for instance, this one, uh, we can we can affect uh, any scaling that we want on it because I believe it's a physical attack. Whereas these ones, at a surface level, are either sacred or lightning. And same thing with this one, it's going to be blood. Uh, so you can't avoid the fact that you're going to be dipping into blood scaling, I guess. Um, so it's a little bit of a wishy-washy thing. But if it's if it doesn't have a, a direct elemental ap application, then you can put whatever scaling you want on it. Uh, so, for instance, I really, really wanted a, a Bloodhound Step. This is an incredibly good Ash of War. It's very reminiscent of Bloodborne's uh, Break a Bone and, like, Dash Around. It's really, really good. Um, and it has a stupid high invincibility frame, and also you can just traverse a ton of ground. Uh, and if you're playing a caster, I think this is going to be absolutely a must-have, because you can just get a shit ton of ground away from an enemy uh, and then queue up your spells. Um, and and also it has such a it has a five percent FP cost. It's nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, and yeah, it's just really good. And now I have the ability to put sacred on it, which my highest stat is faith. So now I'm actually dipping into pretty decent damage with my melee weapons, despite I don't have the most strength. Uh, I do have a lot of dexterity and a lot of faith. Um, but uh, but yeah, and of course you can look into the weapons on the Wikipedia about what are the best scaling uh, weapons for my build, and then you can go and see if you can actually get access to them. Or if they're behind a big old boss and maybe you don't have enough damage to defeat the boss, so then you gotta find a different way to solve the problem. But yeah, uh, there are ways to circumnavigate the scaling in the game, but the easiest thing is just to forget about Ash of War and slap this on if you happen to get an unlucky, not very good Ash of War. All right, hi ladies and gentlemen, me here in post. Um, okay, so uh, now that we've established the scaling matters to all of the weapons uh, and their kind of variability, the, stat, the fact that they're pulling from certain stats, how to make them pull from the stat that you want through sacred blades or just using special weapon arts, um, let's talk about weapon arts, kind of. Um, so the thing with weapon arts is that they're very varied for your build. Um, some weapon arts are kind of a good utility the one I used in the last part of the Pillars of Power, I showed you guys Wolfhound Step, or Bloodhound Step, which essentially just gives you a really nice teleport. Um, there are also other ones, like a Stomp that uh, shatters a bunch of cryo everywhere and just wrecks enemies. We'll talk about the best weapon arts, uh, of course, in the, probably the third or fourth series, because it's such a long curation of finding value for what you're trying to get out of the weapon arts. <laughs> um, so hopefully you'll be patient with me for that. But as far as the weapon that you want to find and use, and if you're not that uh, big into getting spoiled, um, I, I think just seeing some tiny PNGs of some neat looking weapons to spark inspiration and curiosity into what you are going to look forward to getting, and they can kind of drag you through the world of Elden Ring, because sometimes you can be a little aimless, uh, and some people do good with that, and others not so much. I, for one, did not do very well on it, so to me it was nice having a silver lining to move towards. Um, but I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, I would highly suggest if those guys who are curious about what weapon you should go for um, is go to the Wikipedia page. I will leave a link in the description down below. Um, I will also leave a link hopefully for the weapon uh, blade system so that you guys can go and see if you can get certain weapon blades that can increase your scaling based on physical weapon arts, which is a little bit of a negation, but still something. But yeah, you would just go to the Wikipedia, go to a, whatever weapon system uh, you enjoy. Maybe it's the twin blades, which I love to pieces. It's fast, it's efficient, it's fun. Uh, maybe you like the whips, maybe you like the uh, short swords. Uh, click whichever one you want, and then of course scroll down to whatever stat you have the most of. If you have intelligence, faith, dexterity, or strength, scroll down until you see one that has a B rating uh, in, of course, strength, or an A rating in strength. And you can even see its future potential if you were to invest in it, if it goes to an S or an A rank uh, in your most uh, invested stat. If that makes any sense, hopefully it does. Uh, but lastly, ladies and gentlemen, that is not necessarily a pillar of power. That is explaining the route in which you can gain power. Um, and one of the things that is evident is, yes, weapon arts are very good, but you leveling up your weapon is incredibly, incredibly important and will give you a hell of an edge. 
Uh, so then there begs the question, well, Grin, how do I level up my weapon? Well, my friends, I'm glad you asked. You absolutely can. You can bring your weapons level up a whole, whole, huge, huge amount. Uh, but before we get into the exact shard routes and stuff like that about how to actually level up your weapon, get unlimited shards, make it hit hard as hell way too early, um, this is the route where you're going to take. But I will like to explain one more thing. There are two types of weapons. One weapons that take uh, somber st smithing stones and then the other normal type of weapons that take uh, smithing stones. Um, basically, somber smithing stones are attached to unique weapons. Uh, and of course, normal smithing stones are just attack attached to your more generic weapons and things like that. So. Eventually, when you found a weapon that you very much enjoy, you like the, the flow of it, you like the combat feel of it, uh, and now you're ready to make it hit really, really hard, well, there is a way for you to level up just about every single weapon that exists in the game to at very least level 12, uh, with relative ease. At a certain point after that, it's when you start to have to fight bosses, you're starting to have to chew through some of the game, and you can't kind of MacGyver power out of nothing, which you very much can do for the beginning part of this, for about half the game's experience. Anyways, uh, so, with that being said though, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is already a video out there that I I just cannot top. It's way too clear, concise, and to the point. Uh, it's made by Arix. Uh, he goes through all of the uh, level up ascensions for both somber smithing stones and, of course, normal smithing stones. Now, the basic idea behind this is there are certain locations slash bosses that drop a basically a ball bearing, and that ball bearing, when you give it to the girl in the, uh, the kind of like a broken down husk vendor, when you give it to her, it is going to give her the ability to sell shards to you with un limited quantity, meaning you could just do the rune farm that we all know and love uh, and just buy a shit ton of shards and then immediately f infuse your weapon. You can do this really, really quick, probably within the first two hours if you dedicate like half an hour to grinding some runes and leveling yourself up so that you can make a dent in some of the easier bosses in the game, which is essentially the stone uh, uh, lapis looking <laughs> bosses. So the one thing the video doesn't really say, the, the guide on where to get all the shards, is basically your blockade points. So if you just want to run out the cuff, get as much power as you possibly can within the first three hours of the game uh, you can absolutely do that but here are the blockades in front of you um, essentially you're going to need to get access to the faith outer city the faith-based city but the outer outskirts um, and how you can actually do that is by going to these locations that I've been showing you on the map me kind of crouching with my hand uh, you're gonna to need to go to each point and when I do a little circly thing that means there's a thing there that either is a is like a touchstone or is the place that has the loot or is a teleportation point but regardless um, in order to get access to the city uh, uh, not city, the outskirts of the city, uh, you are going to need to go to two castles and grab two medallions. This will let you not have to fight any bosses to get access to this area. Um, and luckily, the actual uh, ball bearing in this area is literally just opening up a chest, grabbing it, and you're good to go. You don't even have to fight a boss. Uh, so it's really, really good. But essentially, that is how you get access to just about everything in terms of the entire map, more or less. Uh, there's a lot of other hidden areas, but there are a lot of quest chains tied to them and stuff like that, but I digress. So another thing is the guide will eventually tell you how to get into the faith-based city. Uh, you will need to fight a boss, and that is where that part of like leveling your weapons up past 12, you're going to at least need to have sufficient level, uh, decent weapon arts, and uh, hopefully some magic in your pocket in order to make a dent in that. We'll cover all those in future videos. Um, but yes, you'll basically need to kill a boss to get access into the city, so you'll need to have enough power to do that. So this is maybe the point when you're going to want to break off, devour the, the, the bottom part of the map, uh, you know, killing bosses, doing that kind of stuff, just gaining power and leveling up passively, uh, and then make your way into the city, of course. So some of the next ball bearings are actually uh, located in the snowy area, like super endgame area kind of thing. Uh, so what you're going to want to do with that, you're going to want to kill Molog, uh, or sorry, Margot, not Marlog, Margot. Um, he is kind of the main boss that is in the city uh, and he has a boss before the boss it's a weird thing anyways point being is that you're gonna need to kill him he's going to give you two medallions uh, and then those two medallions you're going to need to make your way to the frozen area but you will not be able to get access to the frozen area uh, even the outskirts uh, if you don't of course have that medallion and you have not taken down that boss uh, so those are just some things I just want to let you guys know about some like kind of blockades that are blocking you essentially above board you can get to a 
plus 12 in your basic smithing weapons and plus 4 in your unique weapons uh, relatively early on, if not in completely early on, which is really, really lovely. Uh, but in order to make it go even further beyond, you'll have to actually start slaying some bosses, pushing through the main encounters, doing the story, stuff like that. Uh, thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah, me in the past, take it away. So, that might have been a lot. Uh, hopefully, uh, the video that I'm going to link to you guys to, the Wikipedia weapon page that I'm also going to link you to, and all of those things can make it make sense to some extent. I try to explain the systems at hand so you know why you're doing what you're doing, um, and of course, why you're leveling up and how you're leveling up your weapon so quickly uh, is by, of course, getting those ball bearings uh, and going and hunting that way. But I would like to say, ladies and gentlemen, if you are still quite confused, uh, we will be making uh, a separate thing outside of the four pillars of power kind of thing of how to get the most advantage possible for playing a mage. I feel like that's the way that I can kind of hit, hit a lot of birds with one stone, essentially, is show you guys the exact route, how much power you can get in essentially three hours of just playing and just gunning to the seeds in the map, the getting the medallions and then going to the special farms and then getting a weapon that scales good off of magic and stuff like that so that you exponentially grow rapidly. Um, otherwise, it's kind of too much to just put into one kind of video, you know? Uh, so hopefully you guys are patient with me. Uh, I hope that video series is going to take a little bit of time to make. So again, thank you for being patient with me. We stream a lot on the channel and we will continue to play a lot of Elden Ring for a long time coming. Uh, so hopefully I can see you uh, in some of those videos. Thank you again and goodbye.